Hey everybody, welcome to the Contact Center Cactus Chat Podcast. I'm your host, Eric Malvin, and this is a special episode. We're coming to you from Las Vegas at Caesars Palace. We're at the Mobilize uh, Taxi Association Conference here, and we've got some special guests. We've got a special guest that's traveled probably the furthest out of anybody here at the conference. Uh, Jason Laurie from uh, Australia, all the way f- uh, from what part of Australia are you guys in? Adelaide in South Australia. Adelaide, all right. You guys just beat our Phoenix Suns in a preseason basketball yeah, game. I saw that. It was quite impressive. <laughs> so, uh, all right. Well, we're excited. We're going to be talking today about uh, their business, Smart Move Systems, and what they do to help taxi companies and fleet operators in Australia and soon in the U.S. And so, why don't you introduce yourself to the, the audience here? Tell us um, about Smart Move and, uh, and who, what you do there. Okay. Uh, well, I'm Jason Laurie, the CEO of Smart Move. Uh, We've been uh, creating a taxi dispatch system over the last 17 years. Uh, We're in about 130 fleets across Australia and New Zealand and fleet sizes that range from two cars up to over 200. Uh, And yeah, we want to be able to bring that same passion and experience uh, to the US market. And I think that we'll be able to find a good fit here. Yeah, absolutely. I know we've been talking for a while. This has been a dream of your guys' for some time. COVID obviously has changed everybody's plans and and strategic ideas that they were trying to accomplish. But uh, how are things going in uh, the Australia world with the transportation and taxi companies out there? Uh, Yeah, I mean, they're you know, obviously COVID had a a dramatic effect there as well. And, you know, a lot of the fleets are starting to build up and recover Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of the especially the tourist destinations were hit the hardest so they're having a bit more um, of a struggle but yeah we're uh, you know we're growing and we're finding that we're able to you know help these fleets be able to get back on their feet um, through you know looking at other options either being able to uh, outsource their call center or partially outsource and just be able to you know be flexible and grow. Yeah. And I know you guys work a little bit with the smaller fleets. You don't work with the massive ones. What are some of the ways that you guys are able to help these smaller ones? Because we started out as a taxi company 10, 11 years ago with 10 cars. And I remember the struggle it was running a fleet where you're doing 20 different things every day. And it's just, it's just really difficult. So how do you guys help the, the, those fleets? Yeah. Well, our systems being built from the ground up for small fleets so um, one of the main ways is that um, we provide for call centers to be able to handle many fleets at the same time uh, we have uh, five different uh, larger call centers in australia that, and they handle up to 30 fleets uh, each and so they're able to provide a service for a, a small taxi fleet of you know, a couple of cars that normally it wouldn't be worth them working with it. Because it's so easy to sort of click in and get those fleets going, they're able to service them and it, it doesn't uh, make it too much harder. So um, that scalability and being able to give the features and the benefits of the software, the latest innovation and stuff to the fleets that are small that normally would have think, okay, we can't afford that kind of system. Well, no, our pricing and stuff just scales per car, so it doesn't matter if big, small, um, they can still get access to those features and those benefits to their customers and themselves. Yeah, and that's really what attracted me to you guys because we have to turn those people away typically. You know, when they ha- they only have two, three cars or five cars, it's really not in the budget to afford a full-time call center agent taking calls when, you know, many times these guys are, the drivers are the one answering the phone or the the owner and, you know, he's juggling that. So they know that they need to get this off of their plate so they can grow their company. But how do you make that jump? And it sounds like you guys have really helped companies figure that out. Yeah. Yeah. And there's uh, been so many companies that have said, you know, once they've come with us, it's so much less stress and they say oh we should have done this years ago just because you know they are juggling so many things but we try to let them get back to what they're good at which is both either driving or growing their own business not having to worry about other different aspects that may not be you know their main their main yeah business yeah that's what we're always telling people like you did not start a taxi company to start a call center but here you are trying to manage it and it's taking up all your time meanwhile 
you don't have enough drivers. You're, you know, you've got to fix this and this and this. So, yeah, it's that's uh, really awesome. Um, another thing uh, about you guys. So we talk on the podcast. We like to talk about customer experience, and you guys play a huge role in that. So, what? Uh, what do you guys do to make the customer experience really great for the end customers for these fleets? Yeah, well, we provide a, I mean, because we've got 130 different fleets, we've got lots of different options for the fleets to be able to tailor the experience the way that they're used to working. So uh, we provide a lot of rules for the fleet so that they can say, okay, if so-and-so rings in, then make sure that this automatically gets set because they always want this driver or something like that so that even though it's being outsourced to another call center, that that kind of local knowledge is translated in there and it's never forgotten. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's one key aspect of still providing that small business service, but with a, a sort of expanded concept. Um, we also have a lot of ways to be able to do bookings. You know, you've got the the apps, we've got websites that can be tailored, uh, can be tailored to uh, particular hotels or medical centers or um, airports and things so um, fleets are able to set those up and get that so that their account customers can have a great experience track their own stuff mm -hmm. um, yeah the apps we try to make as customer friendly as possible we integrate with uh, either our own ivr or other ivr systems to you know, make it so that they don't have to wait on hold if in busy times and, things. Mm -hmm. and a lot of other settings to be able to um, balance the the drivers being able to get to bookings in an efficient way and uh, notifications, SMSs, you know, whatever communication works best to be able to, you know, so the drivers can connect with those customers and give them the best uh, experience possible. That's incredible because I know a lot of these smaller fleets without a system like your guys, is, it would be impossible to be able to offer all of those booking features and the notifications for the customers. So yeah, yeah that's really incredible. Um, do you have any stories about uh, success stories from Australia where they were able to, like a small fleet started with you guys, they were able to get things loaded off and then they were able to grow because they could focus on growing? Yeah, I mean, we've, we've had a number of fleets that have sort of, you know, people have come to us and said, oh, we're, we're only a couple of cars, can we sort of get in and get started? I think one of the biggest growth stories we had a fleet that started with just a couple of cars um, uh, in uh, Canberra, uh, mm -hmm. the capital of Australia, and they grew to, I think, 150 cars. Wow. Uh, so, I mean, it, you know, COVID had a bit of an impact, but they're still uh, up there, um, over 100 cars. So, you know, we've seen quite a few success stories where, you know, start small and they had ambitions and yeah they, they managed to pull it off so you know, we're happy to be able to be part of that and help them you know and the the growth wasn't a problem because we were able to just yeah okay you want a new new cars pop them on and, yeah, yeah it's, it's really easy yeah that's great because i i feel like because we've started the call center and we've been running it for about seven years now and we've seen a lot of that from our own clients too where now they're not managing the call center and they're able to start doing some of the business goals that they wanted to do whether it's adding on another service or going after another market or even buying up acquiring other companies they're able to focus on that uh so i'm with 130 fleets you said right in australia so i'm sure you've got plenty of stories like that across the country i'm guessing <laughs> yeah yeah and you know make us mostly we've focused on the sort of regional areas of australia because there's lots of small towns all around and you know that's where we started and that's where we've grown and that's why we've got so many fleets and you know, so many of them are just, you know, sort of local, you know, into the local area and, you know, give them back. And that's where we had to sort of make sure that we give them all the benefits and just being able to take that load off and reduce the amount of time that they're putting into, you know, invoicing and uh, doing all the backend stuff so that they can just take that focus and say, okay, well, how do we make this better? Yeah, and I think that's been a big realization from the whole industry over the last five to 10 years, and maybe almost by force, <laughs> like you have no choice. If you don't figure this out, 
your competitors are figuring it out and you've got to catch up otherwise you're not going to be around anymore so yeah. and uh, it's the customer service that's going to make people sort of stick to you and you know be that have that loyalty of okay i know that they give good service i'm just going to keep going back to them so you know letting them focus on that is yeah yeah definitely well uh how did you you're with the C being the CEO, how did you get this started? What got you into running a dispatch system in the taxi industry? Like smart move. Okay. Um, I mean, I only took over as CEO in the last couple of years. Um, mm -hmm. uh, my uh, former boss was the one that got it. He, he had a <laughs> couple of people from the taxi industry uh, come to him and say, we've got this idea of uh, running a taxi system using a mobile network rather than uh, radio based which mm -hmm. uh, 17 years ago was quite innovative yeah and, and you know so he looked at it and thought well that's a good idea so we got a patent on that and sort of moved forward with the software development we were a, a software company at that time a mm -hmm. defense contractor mm. so it was quite a, a different idea and so and started growing, found a few fleets that were willing to uh, take a chance on this new concept and yeah, grew from there. So I was a software developer at that point, helping to build the thing and uh, so recently uh, he retired and I took over as CEO. Oh, okay, software developer to now running yeah, the company. Yeah, so sort of software development's in my blood. Um, I mean our company is still software development at core but yeah. It's, uh, just focused on taxis. I think more than 60% of our employees are software developers. So, you know, keeping the system innovating and adding things is very much part of what we do. We want to improve constantly uh, all of the ideas and the things that we put into our software generally come from our customers saying, oh, can we do this? And we go, oh, that's a great idea. And that'll be useful to, you know, all the fleets. So we add it and, you know, the system gets better and better. Yeah, that's great. Where do you see the, his, you've been a part of a lot of the change in Australia, not trying to bring it here. Uh, where do you see the industry going in the next five to 10 years? Um, if you could even predict that far. I know it's changing so fast, so it's kind of hard to see that far out, but. Yeah, well, I guess continuing to focus on giving customers that good experience is key to getting to the 10 years. Um, there's going to become a lot more focus on um, account work and uh, getting into, I guess, corporate and the uh, NEMT and um, yeah, providing services and capabilities that allow them to be able to get the information they want and be able to man self manage their own bookings to a certain extent because they want to be able to get to that information. They want the confidence that the, the bookings gone in that they know that it's going to be coming yeah. and be able to control all of that. So that's a lot of what we're building in the short term. Um, uh, further beyond that, um, <laughs> gets a bit tricky. I know. Yeah, it's because I don't think if you would have, if I'd asked you that question five years ago, you probably would have never been able to guess like what's happened over the last few couple of years here. Yes, yeah, quite. The, and being able to adapt to that kind of thing is you know, I think one of our strengths, because we're so focused on the software development side and improving things, we were able to very quickly adapt to providing our customers ways to do food delivery and things like that okay. during COVID, where they, in Australia at least, they were authorised to be um, essential workers for delivering groceries or food and things while everybody was locked down. So you know, we were able to quickly adapt, put that in, and. Uh, allow them to be able to keep working even though you know, they weren't able to transport passengers that became a lot more of a, uh, important yeah that's huge i mean that's a, they made a big difference for the drivers for the fleet operators they were still able to make some income yeah yeah and just being able to sort of be adaptable be ready to change with the customers what they need um, it's important Definitely. I mean, we had to do the same with the call center and adjust when things, I mean, I think everybody lost half of their business or more overnight. So it was uh, a lot of uh, pivoting and adjusting, <laughs> which it sounds like, you know, you guys have done too. Started out as defense contract software and now fleet uh, transportation uh, yeah. management systems. So um, 
And uh, let's see, I want to touch on one other thing too, because you guys work with call centers and outsourcing. Uh, and so and I, I, that's what we do. Um, what's some of the feedback you get from the fleets when they finally give up the calls and they're able to stop answering the phones all the time? Because that, I would imagine that's got to be really freeing for them and liberating. <laughs> yes. Um, well, I mean, again, that's very much a, why didn't we do this sooner? Uh, just because, um, you know, if that's, if that's not their passion and that's not what they want to be doing, then it, it makes it so much easier. Um, it, it also uh, becomes quite cost effective as well, uh, because, you know, having, running a 24 by 7 call centre when you've only got a few cars is very cost prohibitive. So, you know, we've been able to have it so that if they really want, they can, can take calls during the busy times and then offload during the other times. Most, a lot of fleets sort of start out that way because they think, oh, you know, we still want to be able to do ourselves during the busy times. Almost all of them inevitably go fully um, remote because they just find the quality is still there um, and it's easier. So, they, okay, we'll try it for a while and then, yeah. I'll yeah. Roll. It sounds a lot like when clients start working with us too, sometimes they'll start with like one or two agents, like let's see how this goes, they'll give us some slower shifts, and then once they start seeing like what they were hoping to see, then they start expanding it and growing it, and they're like, okay, I can step back and <laughs> yeah. turn that over to you guys. So, um, All right, well, this is your guys' first trip out to the States for as a smart movement. Maybe you've been here before, but... Uh, as uh, as you guys are here promoting the company, uh, what are you guys hoping to, what's the message you're trying to get out to everybody and what are you trying to let everyone know? Uh, we'll share it on the podcast too. <laughs> yeah, well I guess we're just trying to let everybody know that you know, we're here. Um, in, a, in Australia we find that you know, we're known in the industry, everybody knows us and respects us, so we want to be able to come out here and say, look, we, we have some uh, real expertise. Yeah, pit, uh, fleets benefit by using us. Um, yeah, take a look at us, and you'll you'll find that you know we're a, a great way to be able to use your dispatch um, services. So yeah, uh, just sort of be able to get known and have an opportunity to be able to demonstrate our system. Yeah, it, we're confident it will fit the needs. Yeah, and I think you guys are going to do great here because I've talked to so many smaller fleets over the past, I don't know, how many few months over this summer, and I've, I've talked to people that are still using radio. I'm like, how are you still using radio? Like, it's such an old technology for transportation. So I, I see a lot of opportunity for a lot of fleets that could start working with you guys. So uh, I'm excited to see where you guys go over the next uh, year. And hopefully you have a lot of success from this trip. Well, hey, thank you so much for being a guest on our podcast. Well, uh, for me. And if people want to learn more about Smart Move Systems or want to maybe do a demo with you guys, how do they get in touch with you guys? Yep. Uh, well, can go to our website, uh, smartmovesystems.com. Mm -hmm. uh, that'll be the easiest way. You can uh, contact us there through either a call or a web form, and we'll be more than happy to set up a demo. All right, awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time. Uh, thanks, thank for having, you. there, thanks for being on, and uh, we'll catch you on the next episode. See you guys. <laughs>